Hey everybody, welcome to the Flip Fly Show. This is our fourth episode, I think. I'm um, turning the music down a little bit here. Uh, we're starting to get comfortable with the software and whatnot, and uh, things are starting to work, but uh, you know, still, still, you'll probably see some glitches and whatnot, but uh, just wanted to welcome you. Um, we're going to jump into chat over there and, and uh, probably be talking a little bit. Aaron's, Aaron's setting some things up for our indie feature this uh, Friday, which is going to be Drifter. Uh, we want to uh, show off some awesome early, are they, are they technically in alpha, right? I think so. All right. Beta, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, alpha, beta. So we're going to show off some some kind of early uh, footage of a game, which is pretty exciting. Um, the, the One of the developer, the, the lead developer, Colin, has, has offered to let us do that. So he's got, we got a version of it, and we're, we've been playing around with it. We don't really know what we're doing, but we want to show off. It's a pretty game. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, going to start out, though, I just want to browse over here. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm going to start out, I, I want to show you a... What's the word I'm looking for? I, I want to show you a, uh, uh, a Kickstarter that's kind of up and going. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys have probably seen uh, God Factory. Oh, let me just jump over there. See if I can bring them up. Sure. Let me just go over. Actually, no. I, I got it. Yeah, so uh, the, the game is called uh, God Factory Wingman. <clears throat> They are. They've got six days to go. They've got 510 backers. They're shooting for seventy thousand dollars, which is is uh, really reasonable, compared, especially when you figure the amount of guys that are uh, actually working on the game. Um, but I'm gonna see. You know, we've got uh, we've got a new router running here, and got a new uh, router that's given us a lot more bandwidth. So I'm actually gonna see. I may be able to uh, play this video and actually stream it back to you while we're doing it. So let's see if we can make this work. Wrong program. See, now I talk about how comfortable I am with this, and then it stop, stops working. So, two, this time. Yes. Find two. There it is. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to turn my music down and I'm going to play their, I'm actually going to play their Kickstarter video for you guys. Hopefully the audio comes through all right. Hi, we are Nine Dot Studio, and this is God Factory. So as you can see, I mean, the game is just absolutely gorgeous. These guys have been working on it for, I think, over a year they've been working on it, basically just self-funding the whole thing. And um, it's pretty cool. The, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the kind of the concept behind the company is, is to be fair to the programmers, to the artists and things. One of the things that happens in the industry quite a bit is that, uh, you know, basically you can, you can bring in a, an artist or a programmer right out of college and throw them into a game studio and work them lots and lots and lots of hours. And uh, when, it, when it comes to crunch time, they can basically just <clears throat> kind of burn them out. And uh, so this, this studio was started with the idea of kind of uh, bucking that trend and giving people a fair shake. Um, but in the meantime, they're just indies trying to get going, and, and they're trying to do this Kickstarter and get funded. And um, I, I just wanted to, to 
sort of feature them a little bit and show you what they've got going on. Um, the gameplay is sort of like a build your, you know, I think kind of a MOBA in space, but you build your ship and uh, you can outfit it with all kinds of, um, I mean, tons of options, and it's all based on this race system. Very unique art style, very unique weapons, and, and that sort of thing. So, anyway, I just wanted to feature that a little bit. But we're going to jump over now. Um, our, uh, our actual indie feature that we planned on doing today is a game called Drifter, which was successfully kickstarted. I'm actually going to jump over and uh, bring up the game right away here. Hopefully this works. There it is. And uh, Aaron's going to be doing a little bit, a little bit of playing on the computer, so I'll slide off to the side so you can see that. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can bring this up so that I'm not too far in the way. Here. The music you hear is not going to be from Drifter. So. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. <laughs> Sorry. I, the music in Drifter is, is beautiful, but uh, I'm, I'm just not that good right now. So. so we've also got at least one of the developers in the in the chat here. Sorry. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, Sven is the, the artist on Drifter, um, and Colin is here, too, and he's the programmer and uh, project lead. So uh, so Colin and Sven, I apologize if I don't very, do a very good job of, of demoing your game. Um, we uh, we had a, a unexpected meeting this afternoon, so we didn't have a ton of time to play. But we'll do our best. <laughs> yeah. So um, actually, I think I can. I think so. There it yeah. is. Probably much better. It's got that awesome <laughs> creepy space vibe to it. Yeah. Okay, I'll let her and take it from here. So um, I'm gonna bring the chat over here in case you guys want to talk to us. Actually, I'll flip over. I'll I'll jump on the chat. So. <clears throat> so the first thing we notice is just the size of this game. Like you see that star map behind you with all these little pixels for um, you know like solar systems, and each one of those is an actual star system in the game, from what we can tell. So, um, uh, so that was kind of like a pretty cool thing, just the sheer scale of it. So. I'm just going to hit new game here and it puts you right in the action. And it's kind of cool for a space bait game because it's it's played on a 2D plane, which is a little bit different and it, it, it kind of made the game interesting to me because like you don't have to worry about kind of like the, you know, disorienting feel of a lot of this, the space tech games. So that was pretty cool. Um, it has keyboard controls and you basically just kind of start flying around. Uh, you can also control it with a mouse uh, or a, or a gamepad, so that's pretty cool. So, what you see ahead is, is just like different planets within the solar system, and I'm just kind of like slowly making my, my way through it, but I can activate the slipstream, which is kind of like, it zooms me around within one star system, so I can kind of like quickly get closer to the other, uh, other elements in the solar system here. I'm just coming up on some asteroids here. I'm going to turn off the slip screen. I'm just going to start shooting something. So basically the idea of the game from what I gather is you're just kind of like making your way through the galaxy and trying to survive, so, um, some miners, some miners, okay, so I'm going to try to shoot one of these asteroids first, so, oh, that one didn't have anything there. I know I shot one of these before and there was actually ore in it, and I was able to collect the ore which I assume could be traded later on, so. Okay, so there's some ore. And I think we can collect that ore and then we can trade it and you know get better ships and weapons and stuff like that later. So I'm gonna see if we can find uh find another ship to fight here. Yeah, I love the mining system. That's just awesome. There's blow asteroids and there's stuff inside. I'm sure there's other things, other ways that you can get resources, but I thought that was pretty clever. Just simple and to the point. So <clears throat> I'm 
Oh, I know there should be somebody around here. Get some more ore there. So I don't know what the best way to find another another ship is yet. I haven't actually figured that out. <laughs> Yeah, we're pretty new to it, and, and we should explain to you that, uh, as we did earlier, that the, the game is this is this is not final gameplay. This is an early look <laughs> at it. But this is this is more about just kind of getting showing you the look and the feel of the game, uh, and showing off uh, all of the features. But I know I was playing earlier, and I did see I did see a ship though. So I'm gonna fly over here and see. Let me find somebody. So this was really reminiscent of an old game called Privateer. Uh, it was one of my favorite games when I was younger, and basically the idea was like you start out and you have a, a really crappy ship and you can't get anywhere, and there's like one star system you could reach, and then you had to just like earn enough through trade and stuff to be able to like fly to another one, and then you start flying between these systems and trading, and on the way you're just kind of fighting people, and it was just like a really brutally hard um, game where you're just kind of like slowly upgrading, and it just kind of had a powerful feeling, so... I assume that was an inspiration here, but I can call and have to tell you for sure. <laughs> I think I might see something up there. Let me try to slipstream again. Okay, I see somebody here. There we go. So I think they're mostly like pacifists until you actually attack them. So oh, privateer, yeah. Privateer is a huge influence. Elite too. I love the drifting kind of thing, which yeah. is kind of where the, the name comes from. Just kind of like, the physics are awesome. Yeah. The contextual music is really sweet, too. Yeah, that's, is that Danny uh, Baranowski? Is it? Danny B style did the music on this, right? Hold R to lock fire missiles. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice. Do so I gotta push something to shoot it? There we go. Go get him. Oh, I think I got him. Okay. So I picked up one unit of basic homing missile. So the cool thing about this is all this is just within one star system, but if I click on my ship here and I zoom out to the uh Okay, here's a solar system that we're in right now, and that's kind of where I've been flying around. And so it's just kind of like a, I guess, I don't know what the, the word is. It's, it's, you know, it's not to scale, obviously, but, you know, it's kind of like a solar system that you kind of have a gameplay area in. But then if I go to the, uh, the star map, this world is just huge. I mean, it's like an entire galaxy that this, this game is in. So I'm just going to zoom in and kind of see this is the star system or the, the solar system that I'm in. And I assume these are the places that I can jump to uh, next to it. So um, I haven't actually got as far as, as jumping to those. If I just like select one of those, I think I'm supposed to be able to jump. But I, I believe I need to collect some something to be able to do that. So I'm not going to be able to do that today. But it just gives you an idea of the scale of the game. It's probably like bigger than you'll be able to, to play in your in your lifetime or something like that. <laughs> yeah, as we were saying, you need, we were reading, reading that and uh, in your... In your uh, very cool um, <clears throat> tutorial page, um, but yeah, so that you got to grab, uh, you got to earn your fuel or, or collect your fuel, and then that allows you to, to power yourself to a jump. Right, right. <clears throat> um, I think Colin Colin made a trailer a few months back that just kind of had like I don't remember it was like a couple seconds in each star system like that, and I don't remember how long the trailer was. It was like I know we spent like a day or something rendering it, but it was just like this really long trailer that just showed you like all these unique star systems and it was kind of like a game you could probably spend hours or 
you know, dozens of hours in if you wanted to or something. So. Yeah, and it's got the feeling of a game that you'd want to spend that much time in, you know. Right. Um, so I'm actually chatting as I ran here. Um, Team oh, Courtney yeah. is responsible for the artwork, so. Do you want to drop a green light link in there, Colin? Um, so yeah, these guys are on, where, where do you stand right now on, on green light? Are you around 30, right? I think Colin said he was around 30 this morning, so. He might need, uh, I don't know if he needs, uh, okay, I'm admin gonna... access, but. 33. Okay. Let me, 33 uh... on green light, so. So they green lit, I think, 31 titles last time, so it's like, they're really close to where they need to be as far as votes, so. <laughs> if you guys want to toss them an up vote, that'd be awesome. And you just put a link in the stream there, so awesome. Yeah. Definitely click that and click yes and, you know, tweet out a link and tell your friends and stuff like that. So Yeah, this is a Steam game if you've ever seen one. So Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. yeah. So anything else that we should uh, show off to talk about for the game while we got it up here? It's kind of a big game. It's not the kind of game you can just jump in and really show in, you know, in, in a few minutes on, on a stream. It's the kind of thing that, you know, it's really about investment into it. So, yeah. Yeah, if you guys have any questions for the developers, they're in the chat here, so shoot. Yeah. Yeah, Sven and, and Colin are the guys, the two guys working on this game, so. I'm missing that word there. Yeah, this is Drifter. Drifter, yeah. So. And I, one thing I didn't show you was the actual home base, and that's way back over here, so I don't know if I'll be able to get back there, but. You can go back to the home base and you can see like what your cargo containers are and switch out your ships and all that stuff. So just barely scratching the surface of this game, but yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Once it's uh yeah, it's finally done. It's Definitely, gonna be yeah. an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. I can I can see myself losing a lot of sleep on this. So it's Mac, PC, and Linux, right? And is this still coming to to iOS? iOS eventually. iOS eventually, so, okay. yeah. So, definitely throw these guys in that boat. You can pre-order it on the website, too. It's just 10 bucks, so. Yeah. It's, I think, 30% off the, off the final price. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. Drifter. <laughs> so, next part we're going to jump into here is the, uh, let's see. Development update. You know, open up uh, Race the Sun here. Oh yeah, Paulie asked how long do these streams go for? Usually we try to go for about half an hour, but it's typically lasted about an hour. <laughs> honest, so. <laughs> yeah, um, we try to keep it short, but just kind <clears> of <throat> take our time and have some fun. So yeah. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, development updates. So this is the basic uh, format of the show. I guess I didn't say that. I, I try to open up the show by explaining the format. We do an indie feature. We talk about at least one indie game that's uh, that, that's really cool and, and deserves some attention. We do a development update, which right now for us is Race the Sun. So it's going to be all about Race the Sun. Then we do a player spotlight, which is about what uh, Race the Sun players are doing uh, right now. So that's that could be uh, some cool high score stuff. Um, but um, mostly it's about the world creator. It's what people are making in the world creator in Race the Sun. So we're going to show off a new world today. And the last part is the 10 minute game jam. The first time we tried like making a game from scratch in Unity, and 10 minutes is kind of ridiculous for that. <laughs> so we, we probably will try it again. Um, but just to, to save us some stress and keep things from keep things fun, we're gonna um, we're actually gonna use the world creator and we're gonna go in and, and just make a, a race the sun world. Uh, last week the, the stream kind of cut out on us, which was a bummer. Because we, we successfully made a uh, Tetris-themed world with two patterns in it. And we made, I think we made all of the Tetris blocks. And they rotated and dropped down. It's called Twitch Tetris, we named it. Um, so if you see that in the worlds, uh, it's, it's something we made in 10 minutes. And it's totally meant to be something you guys can go in and play with. You guys can download that. If you have the game, you can, you can download it, edit it, um, create your own thing out of it. So uh, that's, that's really what it's there for, for you to do. So... Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. So the dev update, uh, we want to talk about Steam, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we were greenlit uh, last Wednesday, a week and a half ago. And so uh, a lot of people have been asking when we're going to get 
on the Steam, how long it's going to take, stuff like that. And so basically, we want to do it right. You know, we don't want to just throw it up there and call it done. Um, and we kind of want to make a splash and just like put something in there that's kind of exciting for our players who've been with us for a while too. So, you know, at very least, we're going to add achievements and uh, Steam trading cards. Um, but we're also working on just improving the world itself. And so we've had a lot of feedback, you know, since we since we launched about just the gameplay and how like once you're really good at the game, that first stage gets kind of boring. Um, and so we're thinking about ways to like add optional challenging stuff to those first couple stages. Like maybe there's a ramp that you can go off that'll let you collect, uh, you know, tries in the sky or something like that. And something that's kind of like maybe not something you want to do if you were playing the game for the very first time. But after you get good at it a while, you'll really be able to like master those first two regions, you know, even more and still just kind of challenge yourself. So, um, so we're working on that. We'll probably tweak the visuals a little bit too. And, you know, I kind of want to mess around with some of the post-process effects and, um, stuff like that. And so, you know, we're hoping to have some new stuff in there. And, uh, I guess the other thing is the, the relay system. So, you know, we've had that in there for about six months now and it really hasn't gone anywhere. It, it's kind of clunky. You have to like post a link to Twitter or Facebook and then somebody has to click on the link and then launch the game again and come back in. And so we really want to just get all that in the game and uh, make it really easy to like share with your friends and you know, probably send a, an invite to your Steam friends and then they'll be able to pick up, you know, pick up your, your, your relay links. Um, maybe we'll make it so you can just kind of like discover a random relay game that somebody had shared so we really kind of want to make that system viable and fun yeah and so it's not that we're totally unhappy with it it's just not super engaging right now like it's, it's kind of clunky and all the things that you have to do so yeah we want to we definitely want to make it so it just works and steam seems like the perfect platform for that because mm-hmm. they've got you've got your friends list you've already worked it all out you know who you want to who you, who you like to play games with and you know i feel like if we can do that right we could we could uh make it so much more fun yeah oh and that's the other thing that we're working on and this is actually going to be an update that we were going to get out in the next couple days or so but it'll probably take a little bit longer was yeah the the portal worlds and somebody pointed out in the, in the chat that when you fly into a, a portal it always takes you to the void and uh we actually have all the architecture and stuff in place to take you to a random user created world uh we just haven't kind of flipped the switch on it yet we kind of wanted to let the world build up a little bit and get some really good ones so we can kind of do like one a week and so part of what we want to do is, like, do one feature world per week, and in this flip fly show, we'll talk about that world and maybe give some feedback on it and stuff like that, and then that'll be one of the featured worlds for the week. So we'll have, like, a featured world that's, you know, accessible from the main menu, and then there'll be some different world each week that you fly into that portal, and that'll be the, the, the portal world for the week. So that's definitely on the radar, too. Um, we might save that for the Steam release, just so there's kind of, like, a lot, you know, to play in that first version, and so we have lots of time to test it, so... Um, but yeah, yeah, that's definitely in the works. The the uh, void world is is not always going to be it. It was just meant as a, um, a placeholder. kind of a placeholder. We were really hoping to build it up, you know, a lot, build up a lot more user created worlds before we released. Um, but it just didn't work out that way. There was just weren't enough people out there, and we didn't have a whole lot of documentation mm-hmm. on the world creator. So people were a little bit lost when it came to the world creator. Right. And, uh, we're still working on that. That's another thing. We we we, uh, we kind of started a wiki. Um, and, uh, not totally sure. I think, I think we're going to probably try to move the wiki to our site because it's, it's just kind of clunky, I think right now. Right. It is. So, um, we're probably going to try moving the wiki to our site and, uh, and, and give people the opportunity to share ideas. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a little more thorough documentation on all of the game events because those, that's really where the magic happens with, right. with the game. And right now the game events are totally undocumented. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, but it doesn't stop people from making some cool stuff. That's what's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. so I think, you know, all in all, we've got that all planned out and there's a lot of little miscellaneous stuff like that we want to get done. I think if we had to guess at how long it'll be before we get on Steam, probably about a month. Yeah, that's kind of our target. Um, a lot of people have asked us and we do, you know, we do want to just get it up there, um, but, you know, it's kind of a big deal. You don't want to just disappear on Steam. There are a lot of games there, and mm-hmm. we could we could totally botch this and uh, and miss our opportunity to um, to find a lot of good players, you know, mm-hmm. good players who would love our game. Um, and we want to make sure that we do it right, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's the Steam. Anybody have any questions about Steam, something you want to know? Somebody said, any plans for synchronous gameplay for multiplayer? We have talked about that. Um, 
we were actually discussing a potential mode a couple of weeks ago where it's just basically everybody, you and however many players you can get in your in your game, just kind of start at the same time. And it's just kind of like a last man standing type thing. So maybe there's like, you know, there's all these speed boosts and people can just kind of like go on divergent paths and explore different parts of the world. And, you know, maybe there's different like Super Mario Kart style power-ups where you can like grief other players and stuff like that. Um, it's just a big time investment, you know, and we want to make sure that we're not spending, you know, a couple of months working on something that isn't going to be like a big feature, you know, and right now the situation is that, you know, I think we've got six or 7,000 players, you know, yeah, and adding like a synchronous multiplayer feature might not make a whole lot of sense, you know, until we, until we have like, you know, 20 or 30 or 40,000 active players, you know, so we just got to yeah. kind of weigh that stuff against each other. Um, weapons for the ship, yeah. <laughs> that is probably the number one, that's got to be the number one request. Yeah. Weapons. One thing we're talking about is making it so the world creator tools would let you script your own type of weapons or, you know, your own actions. So right now, like, the only ex- action button action that you can do is the jump. And so we might make it so you can, oh, nice jump. <clears throat> we might make it so you can, like, um, script something else. So you pick up a, a weapon and then you hit the button and it's like a missile that, you know, shoots out in front of you and explodes or something like that. So um, it's a possibility. We probably won't ever add weapons to the main game mode. It's more about just a simple dodge left and right type thing. But um, we wouldn't rule out rule it out for other game modes too. So. Yeah, I feel like if we can do it right, we can we can offer that to our our modders and just kind of give them a button and say when you push this button, it'll it'll do this game event, and that could be shoot something from the ship. Or that could be even something totally different, you know. So if, if we, it'll take a little bit more work, but if we do it right, it's going to result in just a lot more explosive, you know, potential and possibility for the mm-hmm. for the game itself. So, um, yeah. So I think those are the big things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Greenlight for sure. Thank you all for for voting on Greenlight. That yeah. was a huge, it's been a crazy few weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, a, and, and just getting on Greenlight is such a huge, or getting on Steam is such a huge, huge thing for us. It's like a, um, it's like we can finally, finally take things to the next level, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, finally stop focusing on getting on Steam and focus on, now that, now that we have the potential to grab those players and, and uh, give people a better experience because we don't have to, you know, do everything, all of the matchmaking and all of the... <laughs> all of that from our website. Now we can actually just focus on, on the game, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, yeah. Okay. I, I'm getting kind of addicted. I'm <laughs> distracted. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> uh, happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next part here is the, uh, the player spotlight. <clears throat> Look at that, it transitioned. It worked. I didn't break it. <laughs> okay. So we want to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, player worlds here. And if you if you have the game, and if you, you only you can only really see this if you log in, the uh, the public worlds. So um, get yourself uh, an account and get yourself logged in. And then these are the worlds that people have created. We looked at uh, DLV Fast Future, um, and we looked at Mutant Bunny Forest, um, and there's one uh, that I just discovered. I actually, this was I saw this on a, a YouTube Let's Play before I even found it myself. So uh, I think if I go to most recent, it's in there. Um, out of here. So it's pretty basic at the moment, but I thought the aesthetic was just awesome. It's um, got windows in the building. Like stretch cubes. Yeah, I think they used like a white underlay <clears throat> uh, and put it in a put them inside of a stretch cube. So it's a little bit of a coin fest in the first uh, <laughs> the first region. It's just a, kind of kind of easy in a lot of stuff. Um, I could definitely see a few less coins and a, a few more obstacles in the in the first region. Then when you jump into the second region, it gets pretty uh, pretty hairy. Things start getting a little more interesting. Oh, one thing too, um, we we want to bring out. I keep forgetting to mention this. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the XML file format for our modders. Oh, yeah. So basically, you know, when you create a, a world it's saved in a really basic XML file, it's just like on your hard drive. So if you guys want to explore that at all, it's just, you know, a file that's in your documents directory. It's like, you know, my document slash race the sun world or something like that. And it's, it's pretty readable. You know, I, 
I wouldn't recommend messing with it too much, you know, unless you kind of know what you're doing. Because you know, if you break it, it probably won't load in the game. So save a backup at least. But mm. you know, it's it's just kind of like an element for each pattern, and then an element for each event, and um, you know, you can copy and paste them to create a new local world or whatever. We try to put most of that stuff in the game, so you don't have to excuse me, mess with that. But um, mm-hmm. pretty small. Yeah. So if you do want to hack that, if you're comfortable editing XML, it's pretty well marked up, you know. Uh, you can pretty much read everything that's in there. Um, and if you get good at it, write a tutorial so other people can do it. <laughs> um, the other thing, though, is uh, that if you take the main world, if you take the uh, Race the Sun world, which I think is available right away in the editor, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you just you can just delete all the patterns, and you'll still have the, uh, the bird... And some of the other, like, the, yeah, the bird that flies over at the end of the rounds. And some of the other things will just kind of be, like, ready for you to use. So you right. can use that as prefab. Um, you can do the same thing with Apocalypse and with mm-hmm. Void if you want to do a space world. Mm-hmm. Um, just use that as prefab and start with that. And then, like, when you get, you know, if you want the bird. If you don't want the bird, start from scratch. But, um, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's totally possible you could copy-paste. Oh, nice. It's just really it's dense. Just, oh, it's dense. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Great job. Great job on the visuals. The difficulty ramp is nice too. Yeah. All right. So who who created that again? Let me jump back out of here. Out of here. Created by Grung. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know who that is. He uh, Grungy. He he uh, he's been doing a Let's Play series. Oh, okay. On the game. Cool. He has, like, 15 of them at this point, or something like that. I've been watching this, so. Sweet. Big fan of the game, so. <laughs> yeah. I was going to call him out as, as, you know, like, a cool player anyway, but, um, so that's kind of neat. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and, uh, actually rate this. And I think this is, this is a, a four out of five for its visual style. <laughs> so. <laughs> and uh, no, another thing is that you can edit your world. So if you want to update to this, if you want to update uh, your world and, and, you know, basically add more content, you can totally do that. And, and the system should just recognize that it's an update and jump in there and do right. it. So, um, so, yeah, that's not a slam at all. I, uh, uh, the four out of five. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, next part is the game jam. Does anybody have any, like, uh, did, we, did we take themes? You know, we asked for themes on, on Facebook, on a, a Facebook post, but I don't think anybody... Uh, suggested one. So if anybody has an idea for a theme for our 10 minute game jam here at the end, we're definitely open to suggestions. <laughs> Last week we made a Tetris theme world. So if you have any other ideas for a theme, um, put them in the chat. Yeah. So before we get started here, let me just uh, stop the countdown time here. <laughs> okay. So this is the world creator. I'm going to jump over to the world creator. I'm going to give us at least that, that much of a head start. In my world, create new. Now we're, we're about there. So, <laughs> Fruit fly show, maybe maybe start a basic world or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so give us some ideas for themes in the chat there, guys. Yeah, you guys got a theme. Like I said, last week was Tetris. That was really cool. We probably could look at that post from last week. There may have been some other ideas in there that we didn't do. Oh, yeah. Uh, circular shadows. It was UFO. Oh, they were talking about the, uh, the other one. UFOs. Oh, yeah. UFOs. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, the big circuit, the big shadow is like, um, if you see clouds coming up on the horizon, um, those will cast shadows. Um, there probably are some things in the game that, that, that cast big shadows. Mm-hmm. But I can't think of them other than clouds. But basically, anything that casts a shadow is going to slow you down in the game. So. Okay, so Fox said, considering you got green light, maybe a green light team. Ooh, okay. <laughs> First suggestion gets it. <laughs> I should probably call this out. We just say like green light celebration, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Uh, well, we should call this like ten men. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so this is a totally blank world, um, and I'm gonna hit the timer, and we're gonna we're gonna come up with an idea, and we're gonna make it happen. So, All right. <laughs> <You> ready? <laughs> Let me just tweet this out here. All right. <clears throat> green light. Green light. Um, I gotta refresh it to see it. 
at the world. <coughs> these are the, these are the uh, overall settings here, so I'm going to name it here too. I feel like tweeting. <laughs> 10 minutes. All right, so the ambient light, uh, it's kind of a gray color. Let's try keeping it like that for now. Uh, I'm going to add a sky color. The first one is this. I think we should make the sky greenish. <laughs> um, but I want it to be really dark. You could make a dark sky with a green, like, sunset color. Too. Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> let's do it like that. Okay, so we add this, the sky color, and let's do the sunset color as, like, bright green. Okay, let's bring the alpha to something like that. Let's see what that looks like. Well, let's take the uh, camera angle here, too. The camera's always too close. We gotta fix that. Yeah. Let's try something like that. What are we doing on time here? Eight, Eight minutes. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna make a pattern real quick. We need a pattern. Uh, I'm just gonna test it just because I want to see the what we got. Oh, I know. You, maybe we should set that that sun level a little bit lower. Show that green green glow right away. Sun is there like a start, sun begin location. I said like eighty. That looks like. Oh, maybe that's too much. Oh, it's set already. <laughs> Sun. December. I think it's pretty. I think it's there. I think it's just really subtle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, we got kind of a kind of a concept there. I'm actually gonna uh, same location. Is it not rotated? Yeah, yeah, I mean, almost not rotated at all. I'm gonna pull this out all the way up. So, what should we make for objects? What's a good what's a good green light object here? <laughs> light bulb? I don't know. A light bulb? Okay, let's make a light bulb. Uh, I'm just gonna call this some generic names here because we gotta keep moving on this. So. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> I think you should allocate more time to the game jam session. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's make a bulb. <clears throat> so I'm going to put an empty in, and then I'm going to put in uh, one of those and one of those. Oh, I just had an idea. Okay. So there's actually that big white sphere in there that would actually glow if you use that for the top of the bulb. Oh. Well, let's try this. Let's see. Let's make, um, or we could just use Yamlet light too, that's fine. <laughs> we're going to do that, we're going to apply it to children. Oh, what did I just do? Did I forget it? Ah. I goofed. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add, oh, we got to add a, we got to add that sphere. <clears throat> Oh, but how big is that? Pretty small. Let's scale it up. Okay. So, add this. I, mean, I don't think we can scale that, can we? I don't think we can scale this for you. Oh, really? Okay. Something yeah. to work on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, how much? Five minutes left? Yeah. So okay. maybe we just maybe use this one, but give it that unlit white material. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got an idea. I'm add this. I'm gonna add this. We're gonna make the um, this to be like I don't know, 
scale three. It's not right. I'm gonna raise it up. Uh, Thirty. Too much. Pressure is wrecking you guys right now. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> and then we're gonna scale this to two. That's not quite a light bulb. That's a maybe, maybe rotate the top of it there. Make it a little more like a symmetrical. Oh. Why did I volunteer to do this? <laughs> uh, Maybe that's too much. Yeah, you're right. Make the, make the Z have a value. It's a little bit of trial and error with these with these values right now. It's, it's not real explicit, and I guess that's just inherent in all of the uh, you know 3D modeling in general. But you definitely um, want to make that better, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we need to put that material on it, right? Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna just go ahead and um, just do that, and then this should be this bulb should just kind of be like that. Might look better if you think the whole thing like. Just do the whole thing. I think so. Apply to children. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. Here we go. All right. Let's put some, put some lights in there. What are we doing for time? So we said three minutes left. So. Okay. See what we've got here. Still not a whole lot of green going on here, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. The colors take a lot to to tune. That's kind of one of the things that really impresses me about the, uh, uh, you know, when you guys when you guys go in there and you kind of create like. Cool, cult, nice looking color schemes. Maybe we just make that sky green. Let's just do it. Let's just make it like crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. That's not crashing, is it? Might be. I get too many things going with the switch thing. I think I taxed my computer. Looks like we crashed the game. It's awesome. <laughs> For some reason, the uh, this um, doesn't pick up on a second instance of it. One minute. Let's take over that. There we go. <laughs> That's green. <laughs> oh man. A little bit extreme. It's a little extreme, but that's okay. So we don't have a there's no basically the way the world editor works is everything is totally self-contained in one mm -hmm. file right now, and that's kind of how we designed it. Um, but we kind of want to make it so you can like copy and paste objects out of one world into another one. So it's really easy to like grab things from our world and stick them in yours. Like you want know, to put the bird in your in your level or something like that. So um, that's kind of our goal eventually. But yeah, we kind of want to make it modular so you can kind of go in and just kind of create, you know, different things. And so what are you doing now? Oh, well, I was just gonna see if I could change the uh, camera position here. Change the camera, mm -hmm. top down kind of thing. Yeah. So that should be a minus five. That should be minus one. This just need to be like really big. Like 60. There you go. So kind of yeah. Zero seconds. Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> We're just going to go in and look at a. Uh, you know, we'll take a look at this. Okay, so that's kind of fun. 
<laughs> it's a little too close, I think. Still. A little too close. Yeah, you can't see the you can't see the uh, <laughs> <laughs> obstacles as they come. Maybe rotate that up just a, a few degrees. And... All right, just for just for clarity, I'm just gonna I'm not cheating here. I'm just gonna change the <laughs> change the camera. The droid you're looking for. Yeah, rotation. Like seventy five or something. Kind of. Oh, way. Oh, oh, so like too far. Okay. And then we we'll just go back. We'll save it. We're going to take a look at this and we hit share. And that's available for everybody now to play around with it and make it much better than we just did. So <laughs> yeah, um, to duplicate it into your own and <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. That's uh, there's a game jam. That's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. So anybody else? Anybody else have any other questions or anything? Um, I'm gonna mess around with that. You know, maybe I'll create something else. And, but I'll, we'll just leave that one pristine as it is. So you know, you kind of see what, what can be done in ten minutes. The the Tetris one was pretty cool because we actually created we've created like uh, I don't know six new objects. Mm-hmm. We created um, uh, two different game events. In two different patterns in 10 minutes and had them animating down so mm-hmm. so that was mm-hmm. pretty fun so i'd love to see somebody take that tetris level and like make them like interlock you know yeah. it's, it's all totally it's possible i know it could be done so yeah <laughs> um, yeah so anyway i think we've been going about 50 minutes here so we for uh for standard it seems to go over our half hour target but, yeah. uh, <laughs> so thanks for coming guys yeah thank you so much uh it's been great to have you here guys and girls <laughs> yeah and uh um yeah, we'll see you next week.